I made Starfield in 48 hours, and here's how I did it. Now, actually, it was pretty easy because I didn't use a 26-year-old engine. So before we get started, we need to nail all the parts that make up Starfield. Planets, weapons, space travel, AI, missions. These five things are what make up the game. These five things are pretty common in every game, well, maybe except the planet, but they're pretty core to Starfield, so we'll try to focus on these. So let's talk about planets. 3D planets can either be extremely complicated or ultra smooth brain, depending on how you treat them. In Starfield, they're pretty smooth brain. I mean, it's literally a simple landscape with a one direction of gravity contained in a little box. So for me to replicate this, I would just have to make a landscape and put a box around it. A very smooth brain. But if we want to go balls to the wall and make some NASA level shit, we need to go big. I mean real big. We need to create a planet that has a radius of 637 million centimeters. Why centimeters? Because somebody at Unreal headquarters thought it was a good idea. I don't, I don't know. I mean, to be honest, it does feel cooler when I say the Earth is 22 trillion units away. Now for the terrain, there's a few ways to generate noise. Normally you need a 2D height map to generate terrain. Black is low and white is high. And usually this works fine, but if you want your height map to be, I don't know, on the bottom of the world, shit gets really complex fast. So we need a plugin to handle that. Would you think I was gonna reinvent the trigonomic wheel and do everything from scratch? No, what the fuck? Fuck no. I'm dumb as a rock. Speaking of my family, this plugin comes in with very easy ways to generate foliage and rocks and trees and dynamically put them along the surface. Speaking of surface, you like those segues? We need some way to keep the player on the surface of the planet, but still allow them to walk around freely. There's a few ways to do this, but there's also a few plugins out there that can achieve this. So I started with one plugin called Ninja Movement, and it stuck me to the planet, but it worked a little too well because it stuck me to everything. Literally walking up a side of a building right now, what the f- The other option is MGT Gravity, which also just so happens that they collaborated with Worldscape, the same people who makes these giant ass planets that I'm using. So I made a few adjustments and it just works! That, that easy, there was never a single problem. I definitely didn't have to message everyone like 20 times. I should have you know that this adventure of getting a character to walk on a planet has been a long time coming. Like, I started this when I first started on the project. Like two years ago. I look, look at me now. now! So every game has some sort of inventory and weapon system, whether it be Starfield or Fallout or even my game. And just like planets, you can make them either overly complex or really brain dead simple. You can make a little teeny tiny one that they teach in the first grade classroom, baby's first inventory and data structure. <laughs> But we're gonna go with something that's kind of right in the middle of all that. Mainly because I don't know how to make the overly complicated stuff. Luckily Starfield isn't too complicated and it's pretty simple to replicate. Pick up an item, store that item, organize that item, rinse and repeat. Although each one of those steps is a multifaceted problem with anxiety inducing steps and you, well we can just break it down. Let's think of roots. <laughs> At the top we have an item. This item contains very basic information like what the name is, what it looks like, how much does it weigh, what's the value of it? Pretty simple. And then we give it a child. These will keep all the same traits and information and even add more stuff to it. For example, we could call it a med pack and it restores health, but it still has all those basic values. Or we can make an additional child of the item and call it a weapon and give basic weapon functionality. This can go a long way and your roots can get pretty big. And if you make one change to the top, it trickles down and affects everything in the root chain? Chain root? The thing? I don't fucking know. Pretty cool stuff. And this is how large games are able to create so many items in loot. Because it's very easy to manage and usually you can just change all these attributes based off a spreadsheet. Some real fucking nerd shit going on. 
I mean, it's a lot to explain, but I think it's pretty cool stuff, and I mean, it's something that I picked up in college, <laughs> and it's something that I've been using since. But you know what's cooler than data structures and code? Fucking space flight, literally goddamn in the sky, in the fucking in the universe, flying around, zoom, buckle up, Buster Boy, we're going to space. space. <laughs> That's right, motherfucker. We can take off of a planet and fly to another planet seamlessly. I wish I could say that this was the hardest part of the game, but honestly, it did not take long at all. I just put in a bunch of zeros until it fell right, and it, it just works. Now, I have four different speeds of space travel. A low fast cruising speed meant for slow travel, you know, just get your final approach ready. A terrain booster, which, well, it's kind of in the name, it's meant for boosting on the terrain. An orbital speed, which gets you around planets really fucking fast. And then the final speed, light speed. No, 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 light speed is too slow. Light speed too slow? Yes, we're gonna have to go right to ludicrous speed. <gasps> ludicrous speed? Sir, we've never gone that fast before. I don't know if the ship can take us. What's the matter, Colonel Sanders? Chicken? Prepare ship! Prepare ship for ludicrous speed. Fasten all seatbelts. Seal all entrances and exits. Close all shops in the mall. Cancel the free ring circus. Secure all animals in the zoo. Give me that, you petty excuse for an officer. Now hear this. Ludicrous speed! Sir, hadn't you better buckle up? Now ah, buckle this! Ludicrous speed! Go! <laughs> Ludicrous speed was literally created by smashing zeros on my keyboard until I got to the other side of the solar system. And I mean, it definitely works. I mean, I'm shocked it works, but it definitely works. Fuck you, NASA. I mean, wait, no, hold on. I need an internship, I, a job, please. You know what doesn't work? <laughs> These transitions are horrible. So, as much as I tried to get AI working, it was such a difficult task that I ultimately gave up, and the new point of the game is to watch paint dry across the planet. Just kidding, bozo! We got this shit so easy! Fucking zoom, zap, zoom! Look at this health! It goes up and fail! Got the fucking get, get me the fucking zero! I mean, they work. They're not the brightest chaps in the galaxy, but neither is Starfield, so, you know, I count that as a win. Along with AI, I created dynamic missions, which was created with a real AI, so that I don't have to make 20 billion lines of dialogue. Just set up the AI at a base, talk to them, Get your goofy ah choices, trek out to a mission across the Milky Way, and bam, you got basically a Bethesda game. Kind of. <laughs> Except it's more seamless, oh gee. So all in all, I could have easily made Starfield how it truly is with all of its cutscenes and flat planets, but I thought it'd be a little more challenging to have real physical worlds that you could take off and land on. And I think with a little more polish and love, this could actually be a fun game to play. Well, <clears throat> that's it for me. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Head over to Patreon if you want to play this janky-ass mess. In the meantime, I'm going to go play more Starfield. <laughs>